Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. It's like 150 something or 160 something, I can't remember, but I will have it at the end of the day. And I'm really excited to have my friend Doc Reed on and he made this shirt through Humbly Made um, brand, Hum Humbly Made Design. Anyway, anyway, Mitch is over there in the so it's a thing. We'll talk about it. But he's an illustrator. He's obviously a letterer. He um, is a designer and he's done a lot of different things. But the thing that we're going to be talking about today is that he's just moved. He's had a baby, not him personally, but his wife. Um, he had a baby in November or December? December, yeah. The beginning of December. Like it was like the day Star Wars was released, right? Pretty much, yeah, it was mid-December, the force awakened my baby. <laughs> right. So you had a baby, you changed jobs, you were leaving a job that you really liked, but you were going to change jobs. And we're going to talk about that too. And then also about um, moving, because you actually moved from one city to another, and your family still lives in another city, and you're trying to find a house and do all this other stuff. So, and hey, yeah. Lenny. All right. So, Doc, give us a little bit of your background and everybody probably will want to know you uh doc is not a given name right no um i forgot what my real name is brian uh, yes. but only your mom and your wife call you that yeah my dad yeah who's uh who's goes by the name buddy huh. terrific yeah so tell us a little bit about why you um how you got started were you always an artsy kid you know, what got you into illustration and design? Um, I guess art had always been sort of a thing that was in my life. I was always drawn. Uh, I remember I had a, what do you want to be when you grow up? From like kindergarten or first grade type of a thing. And I had drawn a person in front of an easel and said I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And really didn't know about communication arts or graphic design or anything till my senior year of high school when my art teacher said one day you'd make a great graphic artist I said I don't know what that is <laughs> so um, shortly thereafter ended up at uh, East Carolina studying uh, communication arts and illustration so it started making a lot more sense after I knew what it was yeah, definitely. But I I don't think I knew what it was either. Did you go to that college knowing you were going to study graphic design? No, <laughs> I knew that I was going to go there to study art. Okay. Type of a thing. Uh, I hadn't quite decided if it was going to be a painting drawing major or a design major. Um, and then when I got into the program, it was like, okay, you can choose between design, illustration, photography, like all of those were lumped into the communication arts. So there's lots to choose from, lots to experiment. So why, why did you decide on um, design then? Hmm. The short answer, I guess, is I figured I could provide for myself and future family. Right? better um I, once i realized that there was a marriage that you could do between uh, design illustration and fine art like you could technically get them to work all together and that was sort of like the oh, okay this is the happy medium that i can yeah. work and dabble in lettering dabble in illustration dabble in fine art painting type of a thing and find uh, and dabble in making it all work together with design type type of thing so yeah it does kind of work with all of them so i don't um to miss jason's question so jason said where does the nickname dot come <laughs> come from it's not like brian is a name that people that you would get picked on like maybe eugene or something so do you no, want to go to the say, short version the short version yeah the short version is I uh, love Bugs Bunny and Westerns. And so in college, uh, a buddy of mine just said, hey, Doc, come here and give me a hand with this. And I was like, that's amazing. My brother still thinks that I gave it to myself, but I didn't. Um, so, and then we moved to Wilmington together. 
and he introduced me to everybody there. Well, actually, I moved there a year after he did, and he just introduced me to everybody as Doc. And so from 2003 on, that's all anybody knew me as. So except the people filling out my W-2s. Right. So on your resume, do you say Doc Reed? Uh, I throw Doc in air quotes, but as I was on my business cards, it's it's Doc Reed, and I introduce myself to people as Doc. So but. that's good. So, so Jason, um, uh, are you going to um, weapons of mass creation? Um, yes, he is. The, the full version. <laughs> <laughs> okay and so and you're coming linea so we want to make sure you yes you can get that full story okay so thank you too lydia all right so you um just changed jobs i mean a lot of actual things happen so yes. we were talking about calling this like designer transitioning and then i was like well maybe that doesn't come across so exactly like what you're doing because you're so it's hard because you've been living away from your family um, yeah. for five months almost, right? Uh, or I think we just months. crossed over the or completed our fourth fourth month. <laughs> it feels like six or so if you were to ask my wife, but yeah, because it's not like you just have one child. No, I have three little girls. <laughs> okay, so she's having to kind of. So, what are the ages of your kids? Um, my oldest will turn six here in June. My middle turned four last week and our newborn is four months old. So, so. a lot of, a lot of little girls, girls yeah. are great. They are. So, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the ways that you've stayed connected to them. So, but you recently just changed jobs. You moved, mm -hmm. um, and you added, uh, your most recent four month old daughter. Yeah. So yep. how, how do you, all of these things at once can be a little overwhelming, I would assume. Mm, a little bit. <laughs> so it's hard on your wife's side, probably to be able to taking care of three kids on her own and then trying to close a house and do everything that goes along with that. And you're on, so what have you been doing? You probably haven't just been sitting around eating bonbons, you know, like, thank mm, goodness. Totally. Right. So, so what, 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 how do you, have you handled all of this? Cause it must be hard. Uh, yes. To your question, <laughs> Jason, yes. <laughs> the sleep is better. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> there has been a lot of nights after work where I will jump in the car and will drive around Charlotte and Fort Mill and, and Matthews looking, driving by the houses that I'd, looked up the night before on Zillow and realtor.com and stuff like that. Um, so lots of trying to figure out what school districts, um, the commute. I got spoiled living in Wilmington where I was three miles from the last two jobs that I worked. And it would, I mean, a long commute was like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> right. And now in Charlotte, 10 miles, you're looking at a good 30 to 40. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I might have to brush up on my cycling. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. But, well, so, so what made you, like you were at a job that you liked, but what made you, because I think a lot of people are in that spot. They're like, um, you know, I like my job, but what was the impetus that kind of um, pushed you forward to start looking? Uh, and in all honesty, I hadn't been looking. I was going to say there was an opportunity that presented itself, and I was encouraged. Actually, my, my uh, former art director employer um, at Port City, he sort of came to me. He's like, "I think you need to look into it." And I actually contacted him and said, "Hey, would you care if we talked with Doc?" And um, so that that was a pretty cool place to be because you don't normally have your employer go, we love you, but we want what's best for you, and you should try it out, or at least put it on, see how it fits type of a thing. And um, that ended up not timing wasn't right type of thing, and um, so I came back 
ready to roll and try to knock down some goals and make sure that I was doing everything I could to make a difference and move forward type of thing. And another job opened up and in all honesty, before I took the job at Port City, my wife and I sort of had gotten to the end of our rope with Wilmington. There wasn't really anything there that we felt would, I don't want to necessarily use the word elevate my career as, as a way of trying to be something really, really big. But I, I sort of saw the end of the road and I'm like, um, in my early 30s, if I could see the end of the road, uh, it sort of scared me a little bit. Love the town, love the people, love the family that we built. Um, but had begun in late 2011, early 2012, I think, is when I crossed paths with Lenny doing a studio hop that um, AIGA had put on. I think we were actually in the um, Baldwin Ann studio. Is that where we were, Lenny? Um, but um, ended up falling into Port City. And so Charlotte and Raleigh were sort of on my radar. And um, Port City just sort of gave me a little bit extra extension on the runway before taking off type of a thing. Um, so, yeah, it was, there was a lot to happen. And sort of looking at the market of the things that I had started producing with the silk screens and the like notebooks and things like that that I was trying to build up and sell as an, and use as an outlet for the illustrative and fine art side of things sort of hit, felt like I'd hit saturation with Wilmington. And so Charlotte obviously is a way larger city than Wilmington, really close to Asheville and Greenville, South Carolina, and felt like there was a lot of room to grow um, my community in the arts type of a thing. So, so as you're, this gives you an opportunity. Do you like being in a bigger city? It's, yes. I was going to say that there's a sense of adventure. Don't like the traffic, but the adventure is good, if that right. makes sense. But at least it's um, not Atlanta or uh, <laughs> yes. L.A. I've heard that Charlotte is the Atlanta of North Carolina. Oh. So, but, um. All right, so so you are. Um, I want to show some. The, I got this um, pack um, at Christmas, I think, um, and I'm going to show. I, I know you didn't, but this is kind of. I want to show some of the visuals. So you have an Etsy store, and so and I asked you this when we were doing the test. I was like, oh, um, okay. Anyway, it said something to me, but I'm going to also stick it over here. So. This is, there were three that came in my pack. It was kind of a mixed pack. And I love mm -hmm. these. These were like little, I think you said you printed them at Jack's, Jack Prince or something, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just, it, I think you can choose with Jack Prince because I got one at Creative South. You can choose like lined or a, a blank or the gridded kind of lines. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, it's a good amount of pages and stuff. I think 52 pages. It's like I'm reading uh, the note. That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. From Jack Prince. Anyway, I, I really, but I, you gave, I think it's three is in a pack, right? Yeah. yeah. I it's actually, perfect. when we were, when you were talking about sending the links over, I was like, do I send the Etsy account? Cause I was sort of letting everything expire since we were in the middle of moving. I'm like, I know I'm going to get orders when everything's packed into storage unit. Like, uh, which one of these boxes has my tubes? Which one of these boxes <laughs> has the posters? Um, so I, I went ahead and renewed a couple of listings last evening in case everybody wanted to check it out. But uh, hopefully within the next little uh, while, we'll get everything sort of situated and I'll be able to so, ship anything. So that, that's one of the things. <laughs> Warren said he's ordering 50. Sweet. <laughs> I love Warren. So, but that's one of the things in this transition, you've had to kind of let some things go. So maybe you haven't taken on extra projects. And I think just even changing jobs, you're kind of like doing a lot of stuff. 
I mean, you kind of had three big things at once, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, uh, in, all, in all honesty, a lot of it is still spinning and there's a real sense of reeling. Um, but uh, I'm hoping to get my feet back under me and get the family up here and be able to find our new normal and uh, be able to just keep going. I'll still be hopefully screen printing at the kitchen table since we're moving into an apartment. And um, so, yeah, m my print station hasn't changed. So, but, okay. So before, what was the, nor what was the normal before you got this job? So uh, when would normal, you do this side project stuff? Oh, uh, nights and weekends. Um, I tried and I'm still trying to do the morning thing, but 90% of the time I get going and it's, 10 to 2 type of stuff that I'll, I'll, I'll be able to focus. Um, I was finding that, that when I seem to get up earlier, the if I was up and the kids would get up early, they would sort of stay up as opposed to going, you know, it's not time to get up yet. You need to go back to bed type of right. a thing. So, right. But um, so I was finding that I was more productive. I don't know if that's just me. I, I, you know, I hear everybody say, yeah, the successful productive people are do it all in the morning. Uh, so. But I think you got to do what works for you and your family. So it was every night or were there just a certain. No. Okay. There, there, there were seasons where it was every night. Um, I mean, and all <laughs> the night that, um, Julie went into labor in December. I was trying to, I was foot on the gas pedal to try to get this project done and, and completed and over to an animator. He was going to put it into After Effects and make it magic movie type stuff for a client. And it was, I think it was about two o'clock. I came upstairs and Julie laid on the bed with with her phone on, I'm like, that's weird. And I was like, you okay? She's like, I'm timing. I'm like, what are you timing? And then I was like, all right, you timing contractions, great. Oh. I'm timing to see how long it takes you to get to bed. <laughs> she, was, she was funny and I was like, are they close? Is it, you know, Braxton Hicks? Or are they like half hour apart? Do I have time to take a nap? <laughs> He's like, yeah, lay down. I'll, I'll wake you up if anything gets bigger or worse type of a thing. And I think she woke me up about half hour, 45 minutes later. She's like, yeah, we need to go. So. Well, you got a half hour in. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Wouldn't, would recommend a lot more than that if anybody else is pregnant or planning on having a baby <laughs> well she was very nice to you then for extremely sure. i mean obviously if she's still married to me after four months of <laughs> me being away during the week and i mean i come home on the weekends and try to take the kids and do things and she still is like i got the girls you can you can i'm like i feel like a horrible husband <laughs> Right. Well, but you've been doing stuff too. So, so there is some transition when you go. So there's definitely transition with your family. You're trying to find a place to live. And so the side projects kind of take a, a back seat. Yeah. But there's definitely. one pro side project that has not taken a back seat. Uh, yeah. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the lunchbox love. Right. I was mm -hmm. like, um, did you get some sleep last night? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, that was your clue in for the lunchbox. Yes, the lunchbox love is still ongoing. That was, I guess it started right as uh, Coraline was starting kindergarten because she had the the priest's um, first day jitters type of a thing. And I was like, it's going to be fine. You're going to make all kinds of new friends. Nobody there knows anybody. Everybody's going to be learning. 
and you'll be fine. And um, so I, we obviously loving Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunnies. Um, I have some DVDs that we'll watch from time to time together and she and Abigail and, and I just sit and laugh. And so I thought it would be fun to have a familiar face show up halfway through the day at lunch. And that one right there, the Daffy Duck, was the first one that she got. And hopefully it was like a first day of school, holy moly, eyes are big, there's a bit of shock. And, um, but she would be able to laugh uh, and go, this isn't so bad. Um, the plan was to sort of pull a page out of Lenny's book and mm-hmm. do one every day. Um, that, however, has not been the case. <laughs> As I say, they, I think, are about two or three a week type of thing, and I will try during the week while I'm in Charlotte to do a couple, and then I've forgotten to hand them off to my wife <laughs> when I get to Wilmington. I'm like, ugh. So I've either mailed them or waited to, to for the following week type of, luckily she's year round school so there's like three three weeks of off time so so i didn't mean to pull that one up yet we're going to talk about that one in a minute but all these and so do you always use the same colors it seems like you're always kind of using an orange and a black and gray yeah I, guess. I, I thought it would be you know looking at the way like Joey Ellis and Jake Parker and on uh, some of the illustrators that I will follow on Instagram and things like that, there's a continuity to their underdrawings and sketching. And then it's, uh, it's a focus. I, it's, it's sort of a bleed over from Jake Parker's Ink- Inktober project, honestly. Whereas like I w- need and want to do more of this. And this gave me a deadline and a client and, and whatnot to, to work for, um, which is pretty much how the gig posters and art prints started for me. It was, I needed a client and a time frame and content. Mm-hmm. And art direction was all left up to me unless uh, the band actually responded to any of my, you know, outreach to be like, hey, can I make a poster? Right. So. so- so how big are these? Just an eight and a half by eleven? Are they smaller? Oh, I put four hundred. I, I uh, fold up an eight and a half by eleven into four. So those are all a quarter sheet of eight and a half by eleven, and I just put them in a Ziploc bag that gets oh, crumbled nice. up by the time yeah. it gets back to me. So she has. So it's that- been it's been cool. She's embraced it and um, has actually. Given and some of them away to the lunch ladies and and things of that Aww. nature that are like, hey, what's in your lunch today? That's sweet. So, yeah, I'm, 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 it, when when <laughs> when she first told me that, I was like, oh, I was gonna build a book for you out of this, and if you're giving stuff away, like, but then I was like, that's pretty selfish of me. If the fact that my you know five year old is sharing with her classmates and the teachers and adults i was like that's a win right so. i need that back my dad got <laughs> mad because um, i shared that. <laughs> yeah so um you should scan them before you give them to her yes. i just have to figure out which box the scanners in. <laughs> yeah that's that okay so uh, back to the transition so this has been a way for you to connect with her so yeah. Only she gets them because the other daughter's clear. One is clearly not at home, and one is four. Does she not yep. go to anything? She she's a big sister to Hazel, the baby, right. uh, and, and mom's a, a little helper type of thing. But there's no preschool for her. Um, there's a lot of like outings, and Julie will try to get them to the park and just run off some of that good old four year old energy. Um, but I realize as like this probably could seem pretty one-sided and dad doesn't like me type of a thing. So I, after talking with a, um, an AIG, a person, um, member here in uh, Charlotte, I can't even remember where I am. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Nolly suggested sort of doing the doodle game where one person will do a draw, like scribble 
and then you hand it off and go, what do you see? And just sort of let right. the imagination take over and, and uh, create. So a couple of those have been a sitting down. All right, here's a sheet. Here's a sheet. You scribble and then I will take them. And I try to keep them separated so I can give Abigail's to Abigail and Cora's to Cora's or to Cora. But um, so, yeah, at Coraline seems to have grabbed onto the art a little bit more than Abigail. As far as actual drawing, I think Abigail's still like, oh, squirrel and this and that and right. just all over the place. So, but she's the four year old. Yeah. Yeah. That's OK. She'll yeah, learn. totally. No, I mean, and she, they, they both love coloring and the activity books. And every time I go to someplace and they have sketchbooks, I come back and I'm like, hey, I got a new sketchbook when that one's filled up. And they're like, they immediately run over and pull that out and start drawing. And like, <laughs> I want to get a new sketchbook. And Right. So. Well, at least um, you're not like, they have to be great. You know, that would be, uh, yeah. that would be kind of go along with the non-sharing dad kind of thing. Yeah. Like get back mm -hmm. to the drawings. Kind you're of talking thing. about their sketches or my sketches to them? Their sketches. Yeah. At least you're not saying um, that to them. Like, mm, I don't know if this, this is a Jackson part. Pollock crap? <laughs> yeah. Who's Jackson Pollock dad? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so how, do you do Skype or something with them so they still see you? We do. Uh, we do FaceTime sort of about uh, 730 and sort of say, hey, how was your day? What happened? And nice check in. I, because Julie's putting the drawings in the, the lunch boxes, I'm sort of curious, to be like, hey, what'd you, was there anything in your lunch today? And uh, she was like, yeah, today was the fox or today was the gopher or whatever. Does so she ever not this, like them? Um, I don't. I haven't, I don't believe I've gotten a bad review, <laughs> but um, that may be a whole nother conversation. I can't believe my dad tried to draw a Care Bear as Batman. Can you believe this? <laughs> That's so funny. That would, that would be sad, but hopefully you won't get one of those, one of those, hopefully. So, I mean, that would be, I would rather watch that as reality TV than some of the reality TV on. True, true, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, 3.5 on Yelp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Uh, so, so, and Jeffy says he'll get you a lunch. He'll get a lunch box if you do a drawing for him. So there's some passive income there for you. You could make yes. drawings and. Um, I'm trying and to figure out how to do that. There you go. I saw yeah. some guy on um, Shark Tank who drew cats, you know, super fast and people paid for him, you know. See, there you go. <clears throat> So not super right. fast. <laughs> yeah. Well, you maybe have to go a little simpler, maybe. But yeah, definitely, definitely. So, what would you recommend somebody who's? Let's just talk about the job because there's definitely okay. transitions where you go from one job to another, and you're kind of you start out and you may be over people or you may not be over people, but you're kind of low man on the totem pole e either way because you don't know how the stuff works at the new place. So how long is that transition? Do you feel like you are in the groove now or do you still feel new? I'm finding footing, uh, but there is still, I mean, it's a, it's the largest company I've ever worked for. I mean, there's, we're in a entire building of 10 floors dedicated to this company. And then there's like two thirds of our staff is remote. Like all over the country type of a thing. And so there's so many different sub companies and, and that have been purchased over the last two, I think in the last two years we've bought nine companies. So and where so, do you work? Uh, Premier Brian. Inc. It's Say it again. Uh, Premier Inc. It's in the healthcare sector. And uh, so I'm learning words like sector. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, uh, yeah. So but this is a different kind than working at a church or working at some other, yeah. uh, other, I mean, this is kind of maybe slower paced in some extent, uh, some yeah, or less variety. Said, there's, it's, 
The, like the 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 entire team has basically been put together in the last six to eight months, type of a thing. Like everybody on the team is, with the exception of like two or three, is new, up to like six eight eight months. Um, but they're trying to do a lot of things. They're trying to approach healthcare from a more storytelling standpoint as a. Mm instead of this sort of sterile business here's another one b2b didn't know what that was <laughs> so like you're like a ago. b yeah yeah what is all this b2c and b2 what what is what are these so, bees yeah. at the ocean what are you talking about <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like i'm a moron well, so let's tell people who, if they don't know, let's help them. So B2B is business to business and B2C yeah. is business to consumer or business to customer. So it's kind of like right. different um, directives. So if, if you're a business that operates with, or mainly does business with other businesses, it's B2B. Yes. Yeah. So so that nobody else feels that same way because I have had that same conversation. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of... I mean, acronyms and I mean, even the healthcare vocabulary, I'm, I know designers, we get a bad rap as going, the kerning's off on that and the letting and the blah, 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 blah. And we just rattle off all of the buzzwords that we've learned through college and, and through our career. And then you switch fields, sort of, and you jump in and everybody's throwing these acronyms around and you're like, mental note made don't use buzzwords in design when you're talking to your clients, like help walk them through the process. So it's been an eye opening uh, experience as far as that goes um, to be on the receiving end. So. So, but one thing you told me that you liked about this position was that it, everybody was kind of even, right? Yeah. It, the, it definitely seems to be more of a, like there's a couple of, heads and as in the hierarchy of how things get done but as far as like sometimes in some shops or firms you can have the okay your junior designer or intern junior designer production artist designer senior designer all the way up the ladder where as here it seems to be more of a leveled like the creative technologists and the designers and the social contents they they team up and there's it just seems to be a lot more across the board teamwork and like i need help figuring out how to do this how to and, and i guess it may have been uh, but then me being naive or in my past careers where I was the junior designer and production artist and everybody seemed like they were always in meetings and then would have the meetings afterwards. Whereas now uh, the, the meetings sort of include everyone type of thing. So that there's a continuity or an understanding of like, Hey, how, what can I help you do on this project? And, you know, jump in at, at any stage in the, in the process. So, That's cool. Yeah. All right. And so that was something that um, we had talked about. And I know that um, like Andrew works at a church and my friend Hannah mm -hmm. works at a church. And sometimes churches think that they're being really nice by giving you a crazy name, right? A title. Yeah. But it doesn't mean anything in our industry. And so that was something you had asked at the church. Can you talk about that a yeah. little bit? As I say, when, when I was looking around and realizing that the only title that was on uh, like our website, as far as our team was concerned, was designer that made any sort of correlation to the, the business world marketplace um, of, the, of the designers and communication arts. So I, I sort of stepped out and just grabbed the ear of the executive pastor. I was like, hey, this may be a real stupid petty thing, but I just was curious like, where do the names come from? Because I've never heard of media coordinator. It's It wasn't on my radar of rungs on the ladder uh, type of thing. <laughs> Not that climbing the ladder is the end-all, be-all, because I'm, I'm quickly learning that I don't know if I 
want to manage people. I, I think I'd rather be like concepting and executing type of a thing. Um, and I'd be okay doing that. But it, if it's going to be one of those things, like the only way to continue to play the corporate game or whatnot is to do the latter, then I may just be <laughs> rethinking the career altogether. Um, <laughs> but I, I went to them and sort of said, Hey, just for what it's worth, like, I think across the board, I think you do your team and uh, employees a good favor, a solid to, to re or to take a look at the, the names of, of everything that you've got things labeled and go, okay, what, what's the marketplace equivalent of a mark, mm -hmm. uh, media coordinator or um, media director type of thing? Cause media is sort of like, is that social, is that social media? Is it video? Is it, you right. know, what's, what's the value on that type of a thing? Digital content coordinator. Yes. <laughs> um, so, and he, he, he's like, okay, I hadn't really thought about that because that's sort of a standard in the, the nonprofits sector type of a thing. So, so, all right. So, so you asked, so I think some people, Hey, that's a first step. If you don't have the title that, that you maybe want, maybe ask about being curious and see if somebody mm -hmm. says, yeah, you know what, um, what would standard in your industry for this type? And, you know, I think sometimes that title can really help if they if you can't get more money, sometimes a title change helps people feel oh, yeah. a little bit more appreciated, right? And I think mm -hmm. um I've been at jobs where I got a title change but I didn't get a money change. And at least it made me feel like um Valued. I was appreciated and I was growing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Guy who draws <laughs> goodest on staff. <laughs> That's why I love Warren. Uh, Warren should make job titles for sure. Yeah, so you, you said you about that. I um I do not know what a solid is. When I think of that, I do not think of that something that my dad would want me to say. Okay. <laughs> so it's not a BM. What, <laughs> what does solid mean? Because you just uh, said that, and I was like, I'm writing that down. <laughs> man, I, that has been part of my vocabulary, and I'm having to unpack it. Uh, basically, it's when somebody asks you for a favor and you deliver or. Um, but why the word solid? I don't know. I think it was in like the outsiders or something. <laughs> okay. Well, we can unpack that later. Sorry. I was like, yeah. I'm going to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> the words we use and don't realize. <laughs> right. All right. So if somebody was going to a new job, what do you think has been something good that you've done that has, um, has, has, would you would give advice or maybe something you did bad and you'd be like, Hey, don't do that. Here's a as solid, the new job. Let's maybe say, a Warren, solid piece Warren of just advice. Uploaded the Urban Dictionary <laughs> link for it to me as solid. <laughs> Reliable. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I butchered <laughs> that. It's not a BM. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't use that word either, though. Anyway, we're getting oh, way off top. Sorry. <laughs> Solid liquid. I don't know. Anyway, my mom's probably like, oh, Diane. Anyway. All right. That's so, my fault, mom. <laughs> okay. So. Um, go back to what would you tell somebody? So if, what if somebody's in the same position, maybe they already live in the city and they didn't just have a new baby. So they don't have as many transitions as you. What would you tell them? What are some of the things you would tell them to do in the new job? In the new job. Um, Wear a crown your first day? That, that would be awesome. If you could find <laughs> a crown and just show up. A like, crown. crown. Welcome to my world. Like. <laughs> That new guy has got a pair on him. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I think being able to not take yourself, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I think we oh. can say them. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Warren says para what? He, he will tell exactly you later, that. Warren. <laughs> I know. But it's not um, a BM. No. Um, I think being able to understand, like, the, the definitely the benefit I think I walked into was that everyone was new on my team. There wasn't established, like, so the designers are going to hang together, and then the art director is going to hang together, and you better not cross Paul and Ape. Um, so I think there was a, a, a good environment to sort of just walk into and go, hey, you don't know anything? I don't know anything. Um, I think if you're transitioning into that without that sort of um, turbulence in, in, in the entire team, I think it would be solid, <laughs> a good idea. Um, <laughs> um, to just ask questions. Don't, don't be the person that just like, I'm going to come in and head down and right. Okay. At five o'clock. I get, got to go type of a thing. Um, being able to jump in and add input and critique and, and don't necessarily jump in and anytime somebody is talking about something, you're like, I don't agree with that. Like from across the room type of thing that could get you on the crummy list. Right. <laughs> Pretty quick. Um, but I think being able to engage is going to be key. Um, and not waiting for people to engage you, but to be able to find that balance and pick up on social cues of, you know, what's going on around you and just be a, an observer of people. And I hate that there are dynamics in the workplace, but being able to understand those a little bit and go, you know, if I've got ideas, I can share them and brainstorm and spitball with these people. And then we can formulate a better idea that we can then take to the CEO or the, you know, the president of the company or the senior art director, creative director type of a thing. So right. but, um, unless it's like a suit and tie all the time type of a thing, I think we tend to take ourselves a little too serious. Um, so I just, I know it starting a new job is stressful and you're like, I got so much to learn, but, but be able to take a breather and a step back and go, they're just people too. I'm learning stuff. There's going to be a curve the faster. I find somebody to bring me up to speed and walk the curve with me the better everybody's going to be. It sounds like this place had really had, had a really good community and a good environment, kind of like let's help each other. And maybe it was because everybody was kind of a rookie. Treading there. water. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think, I think it, it, it also helped that everybody on the, that got hired was like, let's jump in. We're going to make this work. We're going to show everybody what we are made of and what we can do and that goes a long way uh when you're just sort of mailing it and if you've been there for a number of years it's like what's the point of trying because this is what's gonna be approved right that gets old and if you're at that place i would say you probably need to freshen up or brush up on your, your resume and polish it off and go looking because, and hopefully that attitude won't follow you. If that attitude does follow you, that might be a, a heart and a brain issue that you need to adjust. Um, seriously, because <laughs> nobody's going to want to deal with that for very long. But I also um, think some of your side projects help you kind of get some of the outlets. And oh, so yeah. it, if you do have kind of a, an attitude adjustment or, and you're wondering, then if you're not kind of doing the work that you want to do at work or, you know, the artwork that you want to be doing, then do some of that stuff on the side and then promote that stuff. And I think that gets you into a, a job that with sectors, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I was going to say sectors aside, 
finding somebody to do that like warren and i at port city he was my like art accountability partner mm -hmm. and he would say hey i've got all these stories that are rattling around in my head and i i get excited and i'll work on them and, and then like i'll get another idea and so i'll put this one down and go work on this one and he's like i, I need to have some focus i need you to help me do this mm -hmm. and so he sort of put this formula formula uh formula together and was like okay for the next 30 days we're gonna execute this and we all sort of sat down and said these are the projects i need to finalize and work on and then we we would share um outside i think we projects. sort of had it yeah we, we it was outside projects mm -hmm. that we would share inter internally during right, lunch right. or type of a thing and go hey this is where i'm at these are the how the comps came together for the the movie poster of the story I'm writing type of a thing. Um, Warren was incredible, or is incredible. He's the, a brain of a storyteller with you know visual talent. So I, it was his imagination. I wish I had like a, a teaspoon of his imagination. <laughs> well, and he's funny too. Oh, clearly, God, he's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think that that's. Good that you saw or he saw, hey, I need accountability because I'm one of those kind of like, oh, let's do this and let's do, then let's do this. And so it's good to have some, even if you're not working on the same project, that you and Warren still could be friends and meet on Skype, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's so, that save time, Warren. But you could you could meet at lunch now and still still connect and be accountable Absolutely. art accountability Absolutely. partner and i mean the, the benefit of not having your family live in the same town as you get off work and you're like who am i gonna hang out with tonight <laughs> and um, i mean i've got some college buddies that live here in town and uh you know he's just had his second child and it's like how do you get out of the house um i gotta get home and help and it's like um yeah my family's not here <laughs> so right. um but being able to find i mean once my my family's up here it's gonna be one of those things like i gotta go home and do dad duty um and then like on the week <laughs> duty. i was like i was like don't <laughs> don't make eye contact i just said duty um and then you know, wreck it ralph pops into my it head. was a solid it was anyway a, it was a solid. <laughs> um so uh but making time for that is is huge and having a, a partner that understands the value of that i mean last year when i went to creative south I, it was we had conversations it's like i need to be around a big group of people that we can laugh and draw and you know stay up till two and three o'clock on the rooftop of a cleveland hostel and just talk shop and get re-energized as i say being you could do that with your co-workers and it's amazing but there's something about just engaging in the art community um and um i think it, it helps keep you honest because sometimes if you talk very freely about how things are going at work and then you show up at the office, I think there's a, there's a potential for you to really start becoming two faced. If right. you're playing that game, which I would not advise uh, if you could be as transparent and, and you are what you are type of thing, hanging out or at the workplace, I think that's going to be a win in the long run. But being able to talk with people about what they're facing in their jobs and how they overcame it or how you overcame it and being able to be a support group in that right. and you go, okay, I'll have to try that. What's what are you working on now? Like what's tell me about the, you know, the letter project that Lydia's working on. I, I wanna know more about that. I, I wanna know more about, you know, Mitch's the rest of the designers he's got you know coming together i want to hear more about warren's story and you've got this community that it i mean you just hey how are things going i know you're in the middle of doing dinner with your kids 
call me or FaceTime me when you're done. Um, so there's a lot of conversations that happen in the early, late evenings and on weekends that it's, it's so important. Um, not to alienate your spouse or your, your partner type of thing, but Julie and I have those conversations and then she also understands that I need to get out and talk with Lenny and Warren and Andrew and, and you know, just be able to go, hey, but it's what like am I not doing right. It's like a plant. And here's like a weird analogy, maybe. But as I'm thinking, because you do, you go get submerged. So, so you know, like your house plants, like once a year, you put them in the bathtub and turn the shower on or in the sink or something, and you just kind of flood them. Like that's, that's kind of what creative. <laughs> Pardon? So that's why mine are all dead. They don't ever make it. I don't ever do give them a bath. <laughs> Well, all mine died that, too, but yeah. I know that you're supposed to do this, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Casey says she's doing that to her yes. right now, but but that's what Creative South is, and I think <laughs> kind of we need that. Um, <laughs> but we yeah, need that, you and and then you other times the rest of the year you just get watered, hopefully mm -hmm. regularly, and that's mm -hmm. that. And I also really like that Warren said, "Hey, let's not." I mean, you might be meeting every day or once a week and talking about this, but you're not having weekly goals. You're having like monthly goals. And I yeah. think, especially with a family, it's hard. You can't be like, hey, you know what? You're going to have to put yourself to bed and take your own bath because, and, and baby. No, I can't. Uh, you're bum right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's nothing like a, a toddler screaming from the toilet. Help me get down. <laughs> oh, you could get him a stool. That would be too easy. It's way oh. more fun to just like watch him. <laughs> Brian says it's the white me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it totally is. And I said stool. So we got duty and stool. Okay. So, all right. Because we're almost out of time. <laughs> so. <laughs> You snorted? At least you yeah. didn't sn snot or drool. Oh. He made me laugh so hard at the the test. I literally had spittle come out of my mouth this far. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <sighs> um, <laughs> this is, yeah, Lydia, that's funny. All right. So, um, uh, okay. So, all right, so just tell me what's next. So after we've gotten through like three questions, um, what's next for you after you get your family settled? How do you, what, like, how do you get focus? And how, when do you plan? Is it going to be like October? You're going to get things back up and running, or? Man, I, I I would love for it to be sooner than that, but I I know that reality is going to be a bigger obstacle to overcome. The, uh, so, I mean, as I say, I would love, you know, to have things ready to roll and be back into a flow by the time um, my oldest goes back to school for first grade, I, I would love to sort of have a rhythm figured out and then be able to slide back into school rhythm and then see what things look like at that point. But, um, Cause your little, your middle one, she'll be going to uh, kindergarten, right? She'll be four slash five. No, she just turned four, right? Yeah, she just turned four. I think we got another year. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, you Warren get uh, talk to you soon. Oh, I don't know what up the vetter is, but that must be some secret speak from church. Uh, he's another one of our account of our accountability buddies. Okay. Is that Almost everybody there. has um, nicknames except Warren? Oh, that's his last name. Oh, Vetter. Uh, we, call, we call Warren W. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, all right. So, so next, what would be the first thing? Because you've had to drop a lot of things except the lunchbox, love. Yeah. So, what um, what would be something that you would? What is going to be the first thing you really want to pick back up? What have you missed? I definitely have missed uh, screen printing and just illustrating for that like art print medium. There's something about the 
sitting down and drawing it and making it and thinking it and then executing it on the computer. But then there's something completely magical when you put it all aside and you mix and paint and the smells and the ink gets under your nails and you're done and you've got ink on your elbows and on the back of your shirt. You're like, I don't even know how that got there. Um, I, I miss that. And I think as my girls get older and they are curious about it, they want to, you know, get involved in, in in the middle of everything. And so there have been several art prints that we've pulled after I'm done with the run. I've got, okay, I've got what I need to get to the client or, or whatnot. I'm like, hey, come here. You, you want to do this earlier. Let's, let me show you how we're doing. We're going to put a sheet of paper here and then we're going to, we're going to flood the screen and then we're going to pull the screen. And then you look at the you know, pull up screen. It's like, isn't that cool? It's magic. You just made this. Um, and being able to see that excitement, I, I miss. Um, I'm really, what I would love to do, and I've seen a lot of artists do this, is be able to take um, the drawings that their kids do and allow them to turn them into prints or screen printing and sort of teach them the process. Uh, my, my oldest did a sidewalk drawing. Uh, my Julie took a picture of it and sent it to me, and. I was like, this is amazing. What is this? And she said it was like a heart crying butterflies. And it and I was just like, my mind was blown. I'm like, okay, the whole fact that you put those things together is amazing. But it looked like I had to look like the heart shape became the, the head. And then there was like a crown over it. And then beautiful like a rainbow colored hair and i mean she put the like the close eyes with the eyelashes on it and everything i'm like this would be a really really cool like just art print mm -hmm. um, and so i guess that is not too far off from parents that sell their kids into showbiz so <laughs> yeah. well i have a somebody else i had on the show who um um Micah Hendricks, she does the head. She's a really amazing portrait uh, artist. And then her daughter does the bodies. Yes. And she did a Kickstarter. And now they're now her daughter's like, I'm ready to do this. We'll do yeah. it for money. And I'm she's like, really? You know, are you sure you want to like commit to doing this for three nights a week? And she's like, I'm ready or whatever, you know. And I That's just awesome. thought that was Thank you, Brian, for sharing that. And I know Brian just recently taught his son. I mean, they do stuff together also. They have like a Brian and or not Brian because his kid's not named Brian, but it's like something in daddy. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, you can type it in the thing, Brian. But it, he just did a um, illustrator like he taught him how to use illustrator, which is your son, Benji and daddy. Be, I knew it was something. Okay. But that was something. Thank you. Yeah, he's seven. So he's not like super old or anything. But to be able to learn, you know, Illustrator, I thought that was that was just like last week. Right, Brian? Yeah, the bra brush tool. So I just think that's cool. I think it's cool you're doing that. Yeah. And I, as I said, that was something that got planted early on in college from one of my professors, Scott Eagle. And he talked a lot about like this is a piece that I'm working on with my kids and you could sort of see how things started out as a sketch and then he took it and refined it and I think Nikki could speak to that I mean that was pretty cool because um, sometimes going to art school trains the creativity out of you as opposed yeah. to like um, it's like no this is how you draw fruit type of a thing and um, <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's kind of like you stop thinking and I mean I guess that that may have been what Picasso's career was actually is like a process of unlearning everything that had been taught. Like I can draw that vase exactly the way it looks. Like I didn't really appreciate Picasso's work till I realized that he could actually draw. Right. Like I just I was like, okay, what? I don't understand. He, he, it doesn't look like a cow. It says it's a cow, but it looks like a donkey that stuck its finger in an electric socket. You know? right. And so once I realized the deconstruction and an unlearning of all of the rules that you have to 
learn to be an artist and to be that it was okay to see the world differently than everyone else and uh that was very empowering and and really really cool and i still fight that because i feel like i've got two different sides in me where you know one likes to draw more like george pratt and kent williams and then the other side of me really enjoys what joey ellis and um mm. more of the you know jet packs and roller skates like blake's got an extremely good style that he's been able to 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 create and i feel like that's lacking in a lot of my work as i try to balance so like some of those uh lunchbox doodles like i found a picture of a cat that was making a funny face it obviously was rendered more realistically than some of the other things that I put in there, which were, you know, more imaginative type of a thing. So, but, um, yeah, thanks for putting his link in there. Yeah, Brian. both, all, both those guys are great. Brian Fox. So thank you, Brian. High five. <laughs> so, but it is nice to have a little person that's seeing the world in a new way. Yes. And then, you, so it's a, you're able to kind of, and I'm sure you've been seeing that for four months. Yes. As I say, it, it's fun when we come home and I will, we'll hear things or I, we, we play the cloud game a lot. Like, what do you see in the cloud? And what do you see in the doodle? And we, we, I try to see or get them to see the world. And I try to figure out what it is that they're seeing a lot of times. Right. Um, because I, it's, who thinks of a heart crying rainbow or butterflies? Right. I mean, it's just right. like, like, I feel like I need to do drugs to talk to my kid. <laughs> right. But it's, it's that it, they are like, can't you see that? Like, it's just yeah. so obvious to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they look at you funny because you can't see it. Yeah. And I mean, and in all honesty, like I, I, I've experienced that like I experienced it yesterday. Like we were hanging a clip and I started chuckling and everybody around me was like, why are you laughing? Like the, the clip looks like one of the villains from He-Man with the metal jaw that just went up and down. It, 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 just an inanimate object that had two circles in the right place for the eyes and a dot in the middle for the nose. And then this like, you know, it basically was to hang a picture frame, but it looked like teeth. Right. <laughs> you drugs and talk to your kids. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but so th but they could see it after you pointed it out. But it's just oh, that yeah, you they saw totally something. Did. They immediately started laughing and was like, "That's incredible!" And uh, so I, there's always something like that someone else is going to bring through whatever baggage or you know just the way that they think or they see. Um, right. And that I think goes back to getting in and talking with people and finding your community, whether it be at work, outside of work, and just being able to find some people to pal around with and, you know, Andre had a posse. Why not? Uh, you have, everybody should have a posse type of a thing. Uh, so, but Julie gets here and your kids and you definitely spend time and you do stuff, but then you also think it is really important to go and have some time with just you and your posse, right? Find a people to yeah. kind of hang out with. Yeah. And as I say, in, in my case, I think once the family gets up here, my priority is going to be, uh, since I've had a couple of months to find the posse, my next goal is to be able to go, okay, I've got the kids, here's so-and-so and so-and-so, so they have wives, or here's so-and-so, she's amazing, she really likes photography. You need to call them, go have coffee, get out of the house, you know. And let Julie find <laughs> her posse. Down, put on clothes, don't have spit up on them, and like enjoy being a human again. <laughs> Right. And, yeah. um, and then I'll be able to handle it for four hours and then be like, come back. <laughs> Are you coming home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So I want to share some ways that people can, um, people can reach out to you. So you yeah. have your website, which is I am Redicus, R-E-E-D-I-C-U-S. Yeah. I'm going to pop these suckers up. And then you're also most active, probably the best way to contact you is through or connect with you is through Instagram. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then I, you're also that on Dribbble. Socials. <laughs> well, then you're also on Dribble, Facebook, and mm -hmm. Twitter. And I'm going to share those. And then you have LinkedIn. Do you, 
but it, I don't know. I, I was going to say I, that I'll share. I'm on there, but if you use it, great. If not, great. You check it once a month. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then there's always. I'm trying the, to be at, better about Facebook, but. So yeah, that's how me and you got connected. Was I mm -hmm. didn't know you didn't do it. So, um, and then Etsy and Big Cartel are two ways that if you like some of Doc's work, which the only three that I didn't get to show were the three that I used in the promo. So um, let's talk about those really fast. So yeah, this okay. is the one, the man that doesn't have a head. Yes. I mean, I'm sure Barack. he does have a head. Yes. Um, that was for a fantastic project that um, Jim LePage and, uh, man, you can smack me when you see me. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm blanking your name. <laughs> Troy, Troy thank DeShannon. you, Andrew. Oh, um, they put this together um, basically f for the art community to talk about the Bible and to use it as a storytelling piece. And it they... They contacted artists from across the, I think, the globe. And it didn't matter their background, uh, their religion, religious background. There's some people in there that are agnostic or atheists. And they just were like, we're looking at it as a storytelling illustration piece. And just to sort of, again, go back to how different people view and interpret and see the world around us. And, and um whether you believe the Bible is true or a, a great story type of thing, we wanted to sort of unpack that and start a dialogue is I, what Troy and Jim were wanting to do. And it was a fantastic project. But um, the the piece there was the, I got, that was from their Easter um, series where they, they wanted to sort of unpack the story of Easter. And uh, I got Barabbas. And I wanted to sort of do, after sort of reading over the, the, the verses that he sent, uh, something stood out of like the, it was Barabbas was the people's choice type of a thing. And so the concept of, I, I think we were gearing up for like a, a Tony or golden globe or something like that. So there was a lot of, you know, tonight on, you know, MTV's kids awards or people's choice or whatever. So that, that verbiage sort of stuck out to me. And so I was like, it, it definitely seemed like there was this guy that, the people went crazy about one week and then the next week they wanted nothing to do with them and they were on to somebody else type of thing. So I wanted to try to play up the paparazzi and the red mm -hmm. carpet and, and whatnot. So that's sort of the, the, was the concept of that piece. So Kent wants to know is where can we find the results of that project? Are they online anywhere? Uh, it is. Um, let me see if I can pull up a link. It was the old and new project. Actually, Brian, can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Brian. So what, it was called what? The old and new project. Old and new. Yeah, he's awesome. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. That said the hopscotch. Yes, that one was a fun one. That that actually was a, a concept that I was trying to pull off for the Mountain Goats uh, concert or show that they were playing at Hopscotch several years before I actually finished that that poster. That the the idea was there, but the execution just would not work. And uh, I was trying to be too literal and have the guitar flipped upside down and was trying to have a rain cloud be the the bridge of the guitar and then the rain actually be the strings. And so the guitar was upside down and it made no sense. And I was fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. I put it away and then came back to it two years later and was like, all right, well, let's just flip the guitar right side up and maybe we'll ground and make the bridge the type. And it was like, oh, yeah, that works. That's great. Um, well, so that was one of those. And I like the balloon. You know, I think that's yeah. a clever. I, I was going to say, I wanted to try to do something that sort of, you know, what are some different ways that you could create shapes and have them be one thing, but then, you know, then you look mm -hmm. at them again. And it goes back to that seeing things from somebody else's perspective and, you know, a lot of things are what they are. And then there's somebody else that sees things with a little bit of a magic, you know, more magic or whatnot. And you're like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And, um, Jason Munn is one that does that amazingly. And, um, so he does like the small stakes, uh, poster, I think is what he does some of his stuff on, but just really, really clever ways of reworking ordinary objects into 
thoughtful, you know, thought provoking, like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, visual puns, essentially. I, do, I don't mean to belittle that if that sounds, if no. they come across as belittling, but. To do something um, simple is much harder than to do something. Oh, God, yes. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, and Kent says he's going to use that in his gospel slash art class that he teaches. I think that's cool. Yeah, as I say, reach out to Troy and Jim. They're amazing dudes, and uh, I, I've I've talked with them a couple of times about like, hey, you know, this church contacted me about the piece, and they're wondering if they could use it type of thing. <laughs> and I said, hey, you need you're going to need to talk to these guys. I'll introduce you. And Troy and Jim have been really really good about going and and I say, yeah, you know, as long as it's in this platform type of a thing, we're good with it. You know, to so try what's, to sell it. What's Jim's last name? LePage. Okay. At least that's how I've been saying, Jim. If I said your name wrong, I apologize. <laughs> All um, right. So he last... does some. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say he he does some amazing work, and you, I think it's Jim LePage at Instagram. He does some really really fun stuff with with mixing paints. So it does cool. some really really cool paintings. So I want to show your last image, which is the "Don't be afraid to be caught trying." which I love. I think it's terrific. That um, was something uh, that I was listening to, um, Your Dreams, My Nightmares, that uh, it's a radio show podcast that Sam Web Weber, Sam Paints is his website. He is a phenomenal illustrator. I mean, he taught, he was one that sort of his career evolved. I found him, loved his illustrative work, and he has sort of moved into like a Chuck Close where everything is very realistic and super, super tight. You are on it. I appreciate you posting all that stuff. <laughs> um, and um, John Hendricks, another one of my my illustration heroes, was on, and they were just talking shop, and John said, you know, one of the best things that he'd ever heard was the, you know, don't be afraid to be caught trying, and which really spoke to a lot of what we've been talking about today with, you know, if you start a new job, you, you go in, don't necessarily be timid, but don't go in, you know, bulldozing people over, you know, if, if you've got an idea or a thought and you think it's a good idea, chase it. And there's nothing wrong with somebody looking at you and going, that dude is hustling and he's got, some ideas and he's trying to chase them down. Uh, and I mean, there will be naysayers, but you know, but you we gotta, don't, all our ideas aren't diamonds, but you have to get them out there to be able yeah. and you have to be okay Make with for the diamonds. Yeah, you do. You have to, and, but hopefully you have a team that you can trust and that can build you up and be like, mm, I don't think that's right. Not like somebody who's like, I've got to win. Everything you say is terrible. You know, hopefully you're going. And I think some of that, and that was one of the questions I think I had like in an interview, but we'll have to get to that in our part too, I guess, because I don't want you oh, to yeah, lose wow. your job here. Um, Cause we've They're gone over. The meeting. I told him I couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the video studio. Yeah. <laughs> right. Playing on the chalkboard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. So um, hopefully we'll see some stuff and I'm going to just hope for October that you're okay. back making new cool stuff i was gonna say I'm, I'm planning on going to the weapons of mass creation i think that's the first of august so if anybody there in the chat is going um i'd love to chat with you and hit me up and you know bust my chops if you see something that i'm <laughs> liddy's like all over it um uh you know just i'd love to to meet you <laughs> Love to meet you and love to, you know, expand my my art community. And, you know, essentially I look at everybody as family. I mean, that was sort of something that Lenny and um, has, has sort of instill, instilled, you know, and I think some of that is, is bleed over from uh, Mike Mike Jones and his, uh, all I could think of was Bucket 276. I'm like, that's not his name. <laughs> right. Um, you need to have a cheat sheet. Uh, but I mean, just sort of the way that they talked about mm. the, their community, it, it was more family type of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it, like community is, 
almost a buzzword in in and of itself, but like really being able to have a solid core group of people to go, hey, I'm struggling, I've hit. (laughs) But you're right. Yeah. A core Um, group of solid people. Yeah, I'm. I'm just playing. Um, with you. But you're right. No, you're right. But yeah, you 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 need those type. You need those people in your life um, because you you know there are plenty of haters out there, and we've all got them. And so it's definitely nice when you've got a family to go. Hey, like I need help picking myself up off the ground. Like I feel like I've been thrown from the horse. It has run over me, and the rodeo clown just threw the barrel on top of me. Um, type of a thing and so you need you know you need that person and your family to go it's okay i mean yeah you took a horseshoe to the face but you're gonna be okay type of a thing so and sometimes we don't necessarily maybe you didn't you just are interpreting it that way and you need somebody else to be like no that is not how people saw it or sometimes they throw the horseshoe in the face because you need somebody to take your crown off or something right (laughs) yes yes Come but back that's down family. to earth. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a good family. If if you're only getting sugar coated, uh, hot air blown at you, then you know that. I think after a while you start start realizing like my stuff's not as good as it used to be, and it's because everybody's been telling you, yeah, you're great, and you're reading your own hype and smoking your own <laughs> supply. <laughs> right. Right. All right. So. Pardon. I was like, did, did those work? Those met- metaphors or references work? They totally, totally work. Okay. So, well, I have had an awesome time. I'm very glad that we got to hang out a little. And yeah. I wish I was going to weapons and I wish I could hang out with you in person. But maybe Creative South next year. Hopefully. Hopefully I won't be in the middle of the transition and be able to hang out and <laughs> yeah, partake. So. Yeah, I hope, hope for sure. So if you guys are new, you can always catch the replay at rechargingyou.com. And you can follow me at Instagram and Twitter at, at design recharge. You can always email me at Diane at rechargingyou.com. That's probably the easiest way where you can. And my copy paste isn't working. Um, but if you want to get the questions that clearly I can't copy and paste. Nope, it's not going to let me fix it anyway. Um, you can go to bit.ly slash dr hyphen list, and then you can get on or just go to rechargingyou.com, and there's a way to get on the list. Anyway, thank you so much, Doc. And yeah. next week, just so you know, you guys know, I have Kim Elam. And if you are a design nerd that loves grids or loves working with things like this, she has written, I think, three books. One's uh, Typographic Grid Systems. Um, and they have overlays like vellum overlays in there. It's like these little, I mean, beautiful books. See, she teaches at, um, I can't think of the school in Florida. I think it's, it's a private school. I think it starts with an R. Ringling, maybe? Anyway, hopefully she's not watching today because I'm butchering it. But um, but they're really great books. And so she is a uh, very big call. Right. That's <laughs> right. Kim Elam. <laughs> um, so anyway, so check. come back next week, same time at 2.30. Hey, Joey. Joey came at the end there. What's up? I love we were just talking about you. That's why uh, your ears are ringing. <laughs> they're like they're talking about you on Design Recharge. Um <laughs> oh, obviously he calls you Brian. So is he your dad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just Joey, 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 Joey uh, knows me pre pre doc. I think there when we were in art school, I had about six different nicknames, and depending on if you were in my topography class or my design class or my illustration class or our, our music crew, you got a different nickname. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well. Anyway, I'm, um, that is, that, uh, the other Brian, that is how you spell Kim's name. So, um, it's Kimberly Elam and I'm excited to have her on next week, but doc, it was great to have you and thank you for laughing and you were a solid guest. So I'm excited (laughs) to not know how to use that word properly. So, um, that was, that was, that was an amazing, you did an amazing job using that word. (laughs) Poop jokes. (laughs) 
<laughs> I know. I don't know how it always gets back to that. But thank you guys for watching from all over. And um, we'll see you next week. So thanks again, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's father. <laughs> <laughs>